It was the week your daughter was born and your mother died, and the whole world felt like a broken bottle you were afraid to touch. Your living room was full of bodies, but all you could think about was the dream of waking up and finding her alive, taking food out of the oven. Your hands were burning, your mouth, your tongue burnt too. You learned that we are all beginning and ending at the same time, each of us a silk thread line between birth and death. A room full of people read your mother's eulogy and kissed you on the mouth while you cried, as if this was the kind of hurt that could be mended, as if you weren't already fire damage on the inside, smoke behind the drywall and rotting away. Smoke behind the drywall and rotting away when it was your turn. You said that you couldn't remember where she ended and you began because every piece of you is reflected from her. She was always your greatest mirror. This gives you no peace. All you know is that you miss her like you miss yourself. I do not know if I miss him or if I miss myself. I am staring out the window of a train at night, watching myself and the light of a convenience store. Every moment I am alone, I think about God and the spot between my ribs that aches when I remember the way our bodies used to fit together, and again, when I remember that he might be sleeping next to someone else. The tabletop fan pointed at their sleeping heat. Someone tells me, write it out. The baking soda toothpaste he used, the time we drove shoeless to the beach and jumped in the ice cold water and forgot to move the blanket so when the tide came in we screamed and the salty water saturated us and it. The time I asked if it's possible to be a good person and not love God and he said no and didn't look at me. The bouquet of wildflowers he picked and gave me in a champagne bottle on his birthday. The time he told me I was saved and yet I had never felt less holy. The night in the hotel room next to the ocean when he told me he didn't love me anymore. And we still slept in the same bed and I still let him hold me. Tell me what a wishbone heart sounds like when it cracks and tell me how to know who got the better side. Tell me about the way you rebuilt your house after the fire, even though the living room still smells like smoke. Tell me that you love me, even if God doesn't. My mother tells me that I used to fall asleep holding her hand. I think of this as I kneel beside her mother's bed, as she clutches my arm in sleep. Her hands are small and desperate, one curled next to her mouth. When she wakes up, grandmother puts her hands on my face, tells me my skin feels so nice on her palms. She strokes my hair, but then forgets who I am. And I wonder if this is what we're always doing, grasping for one another through the blindness, wanting to know each other through our bodies, but forgetting every time we get close. Mm.